beautiful creature. It's crazy to see these in the wild. But you don't want to get too close because they can tend to be a little bit... Crikey! Hi, my name is Naomi. And I'm Jessica. And this is Frizzy, our full necklace. For this challenge, we wanted to make an iconic Australian creature that people could recognise from the way it looked and moved. That is when our mentor threw in his two cents worth. We decided to do a frill neck lizard because we thought the frill would look amazing. Also, we could add sensors to make the robot react the same way that a real frill neck lizard would. We think that we have done a fantastic job. We shared the designing and the building, but Jess worked on the programming, and we both worked on the video. The hero element of our robot is its frill. Early on, we worked out that the frill operated similar to an umbrella. Once we worked out how to build the umbrella mechanism, we then had to work out how to get the motors to move them. Our final design uses a rack piece to slide the frill up and down, with gear to speed up the movement. The frill was too slow at the start, so we tried many different gear combinations to get the fastest possible movement. We added an ultrasonic onto the neck of the lizard to detect objects within 15 centimetres. We coded the robot to react when a hand is placed in front. In videos, we noticed that the lizards would often open their frill and turn their heads back and forth in a threatening way. We mimic this by using a turntable that allows the neck to turn around. The legs go round and round like riding a bike, with the front and back legs going up and down at opposite times. At first, we added castles to the front and back, but the robot will sometimes lose balance. To solve this, we added small wheels under the neck to provide extra stability. Field neck lizards walk with their heads held high to make themselves look big. To make our robot look like this, we had to make the front legs a bit longer than the back legs and angle the head to point upwards. Finally, the tail was added with slippery pins to make it move as the robot moved. We limited movements of the tail parts near the body so the tail didn't spin out of control and so it looked more realistic. We enjoyed building with the Spike Prime kit and we really liked the new brick and motors. We found them much easier to add into our build. My favourite part of this challenge was programming. I found programming scratch much easier to do. My favourite part of this challenge was getting the frill to work. And scaring our dog with it. Thanks for watching. I'm Naomi. And I'm Jessica. <laughs> My name is Naomi. <laughs> and she's Jessica.